how to fill shapes in Affinity Photo with amazing colourful designs, maybe gradients, as well as, of course, anything else as well. Now I'm just going to quickly create a, a rectangle and I'm going to fill it with a solid colour. Doesn't look particularly much now. Just a standard rectangle. And it could be any shape as well. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. I could have chosen a star or donut shape. But I'm going to fill it with gradients. Not one gradient, but multiple gradients. So I'm just going to resize it slightly for now. And I'm going to create another rectangle. And I'm going to fill that one with a gradient. And it's going to be a very thin strip. Now you could, of course, vary the size. It's a vector design. It could be any shape. And this one I am going to put as a gradient. And you can see the gradient there. Just a very basic one, white to red. Go to the gradient tool. And I want the direction to be downwards. Again, you could vary this. You don't have to have downwards. You could have it slanting. You could have it 45 degrees, 90 degrees, whatever. And you've got your design there. And I'm going to resize that slightly. I want some thin strips to be added into there. So go to the swatches. Now you probably got different swatches to me. I've got quite a few gradients at the bottom and they're all linear gradients. View menu, studio, and there's all the various assets, layers, etc. that are quite useful. You can also create your own gradients, of course. You can go and find Graphic Extra's channel, loads of tutorials about gradients. Or what you can do, you can go to Edit Menu and Copy. And then you go to the original rectangle. And then you can go to Edit and you can use Paste Inside. At the moment doesn't seem to have done anything, but as soon as you drag from that original position, I'm going to get rid of that one now. I don't need it anymore, so just delete it. Now I'm going to resize that rectangle. You can fill the whole screen. So you've got your design there. Now you can't select it straight away, but what you can do, you can go to your layers panel and then select it. So it's selected now inside that container, that rectangle container, and you can resize it. Make it thin, make it slightly wider. But what you can also do, you can hold down the alter option key and drag and duplicate the design. So you create another strip, gradient strip, and you can shift it. So if you want them all to be the same colour, what you can do, you can do the Alt option and drag. And you can slightly shift it up or down to create an interesting gradient design using the same gradient colours, if you want that. But what you can also do, you can go to the swatches and you can independently change those. They don't have to be the same colour. And if you see a slight misalignment, you can always then just go to it in the layers and just shift it over. Or maybe slightly increase the size so it actually definitely does not have a gap. And what you can then do, slightly confusing because I didn't shift one down and now I've got to find where it is. But it doesn't matter. As soon as you recolor it using the swatches panel, you can then see which one it is. It's further up. There's that one. And you can just shift it if you want. Or resize it or rotate it up to you. But you can independently select them in that layers panel. Now what you can do, you can go to the swatches and you can select those individual swatches. So you can go to each of them now and change the color. If you want to do that, you could keep it all the same color. And you don't have to create as many Gradient strips as I've done, maybe you could create four, maybe create a very simple, very basic colorful design. And it doesn't have to be a gradient. Of course, it could be an image. You could have brought in 20 or 30 images. You could have brought in maybe different star designs and added those in instead. I mean, I've just gone for gradient strips, but it could be simply images or maybe a design with some text in and put those in and then layer them within the document, the container, that rectangle. And of course, you don't have to use linear. I mean, I've got lots of uh, radial gradients there. Well, I could use those. And you can always realign them using the gradient tool within that container. 
Now, with all those designs, I like to group them. You can still edit within the group. You don't have to. Once it's grouped, it's not frozen. So you can still, but you can right click and then you can group them all. Just makes it easier, I think, to move things around. So if you want to duplicate those or apply effects, having them all grouped just makes it easier. But you can still independently, you can independently move it around. You can resize it. You can rotate it. You can apply various transforms. Resize, like say, slant the design. And you can do that via the transform. Just going to transform. It's a panel I don't use as much as I should. So, but uh, there's the rotate. And you can, of course, vary the origin point for the transform. And you can change the radius back to zero if you don't want that transform. And of course, you can always resize it as well, scale it. And you can slant it as well. Sadly, there's no really brilliant warping feature. Warp transform would be really nice in Affinity Photo. But it's got a number of warping features, which I will show in a short while. And you go back to the layers, and you can still, like I say, still continue to edit them and modify them if you wish. But once you've selected that group, what you can also do, of course, you can add maybe an adjustment layer. You can also go and add a live filter layer. So you don't have to keep it like strips like that. Go down to new live filter layer, and then you can go to distort, maybe blur, you could blur it. And then you go maybe to twirl. It could be ripple, it could be any of those filters. And then of course, you can modify those gradient strips. Now you're not modifying the rectangle, the container is still set, and you can see, of course, the underlying color there, the red coming through. And of course, you could modify the color of the original source document as well, if you wish to do that. And you can see you can tweak it numerous ways. So you've got that group. Now, what you can do, you can also duplicate that design. Don't have to keep just one of those entries. So you can go to Layer Menu, and you can duplicate it if you want. So at this point, it doesn't look any different, of course, because it's just layered on top of the original. But you can still move it around. The new one, you can move independently of the other one. And also, you can vary the colors independently of the other one. And also, you can, of course, just use, like, blending modes. Obviously, at the moment, if you select Difference, there is no difference, so it's black. But what you can, of course, do, you can go to the Arrange and you can maybe just quickly do a flip horizontal, the whole thing. And of course, you could have used the Transform panel as well. Perfectly reasonable. So you can see you can create a very abstract design. And that is all contained by the rectangle. That's the rectangle's color now. And you can, of course, resize that design, rotate the design, apply effects to it. You can also, of course, add live filter layers to the design itself as well. And you can continue to modify independently all of the things. You can expand out. You can go to each of those entries and you can expand. And you can see all the structure there. And you can go to, say, that one. Just one of the gradient strips. And you can modify it. Maybe go to swatches and change it. So you can just tweak it just there. You can see straight away the color changes there. And you've got a selection there. And you can, of course, use gradient tool, modify it, and so on and so on. You could, of course, add live filter layers just to that gradient strip and vary that. So you can select the whole group, do various other things. You can select the whole of the container, the rectangle, and you can just move back, expand at any point. What you can also do, of course, with that layer, you can convert it into just a pixel layer. You don't have to, of course, but you can do that. Of course, once you've done that, all the strips are not available anymore. Filters menu, distort and deform. And now you'll see it's become, it's a couple little assistant pops up there. You can, sometimes you can't oh, move the uh, panel there. Sim similarity. So you can just, Go and select that, select some pins, 
and then just simply drag. Now that's being applied to the that layer. The other layer, those other gradient strips below it, are totally untouched. So you can see you can create some lovely, and obviously you can, what you can do, you don't have to keep difference. You could go and change the blend mode for the entire thing to maybe lighten or screen or overlay. It doesn't have to be difference. So you can see you can distort that design. And what you can do, of course, you could, once you've applied it, you can duplicate that pixel layer and then maybe apply a different distort to it. Maybe use the mirror effect and that will be just applied just to that layer and that's applied so you've got your deform and that pixel layer the other layer is still a vector design which you can then modify the design you can select all the container you can see your design now with the distorted in there and of course you could if you wish apply the filter effects to just that design as well and of course as soon as you do that that will be converted to a pixel pixel layer you can still rotate it and you can see your design. What you can do, of course, you've got your design now, you can create another shape and you think, well, I want that design in another shape. Well, sadly, there's no instant copy, just drag and pop it in. But what you can do is, you can near enough do the same. Make certain you group everything within that structure. So you've got your pixel layer, you've got your group, and then you can group the group. So now it's all grouped. What you can do is right click again. You can then copy. Now you're not copying the rectangle, you're just copying all the various effects, etc. Select the donut and then go to paste inside. So everything you had in the rectangle is now in the donut. And of course, what you can do, you can change things independently of the original source design. And you can, of course, resize it. You can go to inside the donut. You can expand and see all of the structure as before. And of course, what you can also do, you can go down the bottom of the layers panel and add effects, layer effects. So maybe add a drop shadow, add a bevel. So you can go to bevel there, bevel and boss, click there. And then you can increase the radius, change the type. I'm using pillow. You can also change the direction of the light and so on and so on. So you can create some really interesting designs added to that. Again, totally independent of the original design. And it's still editable, so you can still expand out that donut. So you can then, you can go to the pixel, and of course what you can do, you can modify that if you want to modify that, or modify some of the other structure. So you can go to layer, live filter layer, maybe add a blur, or maybe another distort, twirl again. <laughs> I love twirl, don't know why. Really pity that Deform is not available as a live filter layer. That would be wonderful. I'm certain there's a reason why it's not. But it's really, but I'm just going for 12, so you can see that you can distort that design as well. And you can move it around, you can change the, the angle, you can change the origin point of the 12 as well, and close that. And it's still editable later, it's still a live effect until you turn it into a pixel layer. And of course, what you can do, you can go to that donut and you can duplicate that. Now you could use the donut within another shape. So you could create another shape, copy that donut shape, the whole of the donut, and then paste that inside that shape and repeat that a number of times. Create multiple layers of designs. What you can do, like I say, you can duplicate any of those designs. You can hold down the Alter Option key and the container will be duplicated and much, much more. Now, I'm just going to show you what you can also do. You can add it to the assets. And that's even more useful because the thing with the assets, assets panel, is that you can use it at a later point. So a couple of months time, 
anything you've got selected there, just go to the right side menu and add from selection. So you can see the donut with all that structure is added into the assets. And likewise, you can go to the rectangle and do exact same right side menu, add from selection. So now it's stored away in the assets. What you can then do, of course, you can go to the assets. Just resize that one, just move it out slightly out of the way. Go to the assets and drag from the assets and place it on the document again. So just go down there, that one or that one, just drag and you've got the donut again. And of course, what you can do, you can add live filter layers to the donut. You can modify the inner structure of the donut as well. You can change the colors, resize it, rotate it, all those sort of things. And you can just go to the layers panel, expand out and see the structure and tweak any of the items independently of the others. What you can also do, you can also convert it to curve. So you've got your vector design there. You can go to the layer menu and down the bottom, you've got convert to curves. So once you've done that, what you can do, you can add nodes. You can also tweak the existing nodes, of course. So you can just drag that out and you can reshape it in all kinds of ways. And you will see the underlying design. It's still available. You can still go to that design and edit it. You can still tweak that design and you can, of course, move those points or nodes to any position and you can create all kinds of really unique shapes, all with that beautiful, colorful background. And still, as I say, you can go over to the layers panel and tweak all the various twirl effects, etc. You can also, of course, resize the design and you can still duplicate the design by holding down the ultra option key and fill the entire screen with that design. And reposition it, of course. So hold down the alter option key and you've got that duplicated design and you can reposition that as well and rotate it. So you can create some really unique, beautiful designs using shapes, as well as the layers panel, and also using the paste inside command. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always any new tutorials about Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Affinity Designer, and many others. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.